Paul McCartney, and Tony Bennett. Well, they were easy, she said, and fun. <laughs> oh, did I mention? At Paul McCartney's last U.S. tour, we found ourselves in the front row of the concert, and Paul, realizing a Rita was in the front row, say, lovely Rita, me the maid, to her. And from then on, her friend Joyce Flint, who could not be with us today, called her lovely Rita. And she wrote on her happy 90th birthday card, Rita, where are you? Did Paul McCartney take you on his private jet to celebrate your birthday? <laughs> Please, call me. Rita studied music and education and earned her Master's of Education degree from Columbia University in 1948, fulfilling her desire and her father's to be both educated and independent. She pursued a career in early childhood education and used her knowledge and her talent to connect children with a love of learning. Yesterday, just yesterday, I found in her treasure box dozens of letters from first graders over 40 years. One little student wrote, Dear Mrs. Booty, you are the best teacher I ever had. You are just R-I-T-E, right, for me. <laughs> Sweet dreams. Love, Jessica. In 1950, she married the love of her life, Don Funy, and by her own account, fulfilled her desire to have a family of her own. Everyone who knew them saw that they were just right for each other. They danced, sang, and laughed together and shared the joys and challenges of parenthood along with many cultivated friendships throughout their life together. My father kept my mother calm, comforted, and happy, <laughs> loved, and well fed. <laughs> when he died, she missed him forever, but she forged on. She learned how to cook, once asking me at the age of 85, so how do you boil broccoli? <laughs> she kept herself in good health, going to the gym, swinging, swimming, taking yoga classes, and getting a trainer. She loved Dr. Phillips' YMCA, the classes, the pool, and the people. Throughout her life, she made hundreds of friends, friends she would cherish her whole life. When she talked to you, she truly wanted to hear what you had to say. If you started to talk about her, think about this, she would often interrupt and say, but I want to know about you. How are you? She always said that. And she meant it. She had great empathy for your troubles and compassion for your fears. She always remembered your birthday, choosing the perfect card. Sometimes her signature would only, in my case, say, Mom. And I would say to myself, she did write love, Mom. Mm -hmm. Then I would realize that would be redundant to her. Mm -hmm. The card said exactly what she wanted to say, and it always referred to her love. Rita took nothing for granted. She kept up with all her relationships with her children, her nieces and nephews, her grandchildren, and her friends. Friends of all ages who invited her to luncheons and parties and called or visited her regularly. I have never known anyone who loved people more. If she were a superhero, her strength would be connecting people to one another. She was grateful for everyone and everything, and her joyful spirit exuded that state of mind. Her advice on how to live do what you think is right. Do what makes you happy and gives others joy. And remember, wherever you go, you take yourself with you. Her advice on staying young at heart, have young friends. And never tell anyone how old you are. Remember, age is just a state of mind. To say she was remarkable is an understatement. When I went through her things, my understanding of my mother was confirmed. She loved people, and people loved her. And reading those cards made me understand why she always said, I go through those cards now and then, but I can't throw any of them away. I just read them and put them back in the box. Each one was a sincere and heartfelt message to her filled with admiration, respect, and love. And I'm not exaggerating, because we went through this exercise the day before she died. And she couldn't throw one card away because she loves, appreciates, and cherishes you all. I would like you to take a minute and think of her. We come back to my.
brother's house, we're going to have a home behind us. There's a card and a, pen and a pencil, and I'd like you to just think about her and reflect on her as I did, as we all have done. And hit choose three words that you think best describe her, and I will put them back in Peter's treasure box. That you truly know they have a mother's heart. My mother, we did treat freely, had a mother's heart. And she will be so, so greatly missed. But her spirit will be with us forever.